Hello everyone and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. Here at Truck King we are dedicated to bringing you the most comprehensive truck reviews on YouTube and that's exactly what I'm here today to do. Sitting beside me is the 2020 GMC Sierra Elevation fit with the 3 liter Duramax diesel. Now all three of the Detroit manufacturers are offering diesels in their half tons now so it is an exciting time to look at this segment. So in this video we're going to load this thing up with payload we're going to load it up with the trailer we're going to do a zero to 60 run while it's loaded and then we're going to take it off road to see how it performs in all of those tests what are we waiting for let's get to it the gmc sierra elevation trim comes in above the sle and slt models though it slots below the off-road focused at4 and luxurious denali this truck went through a full redesign in 2019, while this diesel arrived about a year after launch. Though GM has seen strong sales of its half tons lately, there is an update coming for the 2022 model year that will focus on the interior, as most have decided that the luxurious trims of this truck simply don't add up to its Detroit rivals. You can make up your own mind on whether the interior is any good or not, but let me tell you everything else about this truck. Now it's time for the walk around and we're gonna start up here with the power plant. So this is the three liter inline six Duramax diesel. It's putting out 277 horsepower and 460 pound feet of torque. Now really what sets this engine apart is that it is an inline six as compared to the V6 configurations you're gonna find in the F-150 and in the Ram. Plus this diesel was designed from a white sheet of paper just for this truck. It's not like they tapped another company and bought their diesel. No, this Duramax was designed from the ground up for this pickup truck. Now, there's a bunch of other things I want to show you on the outside of this truck. You've already seen that it's an elevation package, brings along all this monochromatic styling. Personally, I think it looks great. I'm not a huge chrome guy on pickup trucks. I just wish it was a more exciting color, but you can get it in a bunch of different colors. Now, how about you meet me at the business end of the truck and I'll show you some more things back here. So the rear end of the Sierra is one of the spots where I think it actually excels in the half ton pickup truck world. First of all now, the tailgate is powered so it's not a handle anymore, it's just a button. Hit the button and you have that nice smooth drop down. Now right here I'm telling you, this is the best bed you can get in a half ton. Why? Because it is so dang wide and because of all these tie downs. You get three tie down points in all three corners. They're at different heights. It really makes tying down weird cumbersome items a lot easier. And to me that's really a big deal. It might be a small detail, but in everyday living with this truck, you're going to notice it. If you want the best bed on the market, you should definitely get yourself a GM. And then when you go to close the tail, gate it's assisted that thing is so light the last feature i have to point out are these corner bumper steps now these have been around already since this truck was redesigned back in 2014 for 19 they made them even bigger so now you can wear some big boots and get them in there but this is such a brilliant engineering solution no moving parts nothing that has to be unpacked nothing that can break that thing is just good to go at all times what are the numbers on this truck well general motors is still the only company to offer this really convenient convenient towing sticker down here. It offers all of your most important numbers. So you can see it here, payload on this truck, 1627, and a max tow rating of 9,000 pounds. Now it is time to load up this bed and I can show you exactly how those tie downs work. Now let me show you what I mean. First you might be wondering what's in the barrels. Well we have bricks in those barrels and uh, we use bricks because they're easy to load up in there and easy to weigh and get right to 500 pounds each. So this is a total of 1,000 pounds. Now like I mentioned those three tie downs and they're really coming in handy because that lowest tie down wouldn't have worked. It would have been way too low. The mid tie down was even too low but the tall tie down is almost right in the middle of those barrels, squeezing them up against the front wall of the bed. And that's why I think this GM bed is just so clever. Regardless of what you're trying to haul, you're pretty much guaranteed to have a tie down spot for it.
All right, Dad, well, we're all loaded up. We've got a thousand pounds back there. And from over here, I don't really feel too much. How did it feel taking off? It hunkers down just a little bit, but now it's firmly in control. Feels really good on the road. And realistically, with the thousand pounds in the back and then you and I in here, we're pretty much at max payload. Yeah, we're not too far <laughs> off of it, actually. And I think that's something that people are always surprised at is, you know, that payload number includes people in the truck. I think that's forgotten about a lot, right? But yeah, that max payload, it's what you got back there, but it's also what you have up here. And so you definitely want to keep that in mind. Uh, with 1,600 pounds, you're right, we're close to it. We got a bit of leeway, but we're getting close. As far as uh, starting from a dead stop, I mean, this diesel has got crazy torque. And smooth torque. The, the smooth is like the most important word to me. Compared to the other two diesels on the market, this one is just quiet. It doesn't vibrate, none of that stuff. It's just buttery smooth. And of course, the other thing too, when we get around to talking about it, is fuel economy. This, this engine is, it sips diesel. It's impressive. Here in Canada, it's rated at 9.9 .9 liters per hundred, and any half ton that's getting under 10, and right away is, is pretty amazing, right? Yeah, and I, I drove this on the initial launch uh, purposely trying to get the best fuel economy possible. It was in Oregon, so in that particular instance, we were doing it in miles per gallon, and I don't mind telling you that I got 42 miles per gallon on my test loop. You must have been hypermiling, riding behind the rigs. <laughs> I was definitely hypermiling. There was a motorcycle club that was a little upset with me <laughs> doing about 35 miles an hour uphill. Um, but, you know, there was there was a prize. Yes, I, I wanted the prize. Still, yes, even, even just to be able to hit that number, despite how hard you're trying, is uh, certainly pretty amazing. Okay, so now payload aside, there is a feature on this truck I have to show you because I do think it's something that most people will appreciate. Are you ready? And this is the only truck that has this feature. It is fart evacuation mode. <laughs> so if somebody stinks up the cab, you hit that and all four windows roll down automatically. For a lot of hot spots, and I'm not talking about Ontario in July because that doesn't last long, but if you're in <laughs> California and Arizona or in Texas or anywhere down south, uh, the very first thing you want to do when you jump in your truck is get all those windows open because it's well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit oh, yeah. in here. So, yeah, I think that's the purpose of that. And, I guess. And, uh, I, like, I like my reason better. Uh, all right, fair enough. <laughs> Now we're back in from the payload test, time to measure the squat. And we're gonna measure the squat on every single truck that rolls in here to the trucking test facility. When we have that thousand pounds of payload in the bed, we'll be able to compare them all once we get more trucks tested. So we're gonna go center of the wheel, down to the ground, up to the bottom of this fender. And boy, I love it when it's easy. That's an even 37 inches. That is an even 37. Now let's take the weight out and we'll see how much it lifts up. And she's empty. Okay, weight's out of the back. Now let's measure. We go to the center of the wheel here. By the way, the truck has not moved. Right up to the bottom of the fender. And we're looking at basically 39 and 2 16 So 39 and 1 8 of an inch. Meaning that it was squatting just a hair over 2 inches. Now it's time for the towing test, everybody. First, I want to show you all our weights. I've never actually shown these straight up before. Those are our barrels, 500 pounds each. And then we actually had these con concrete weights custom made for us just for truck testing. These small guys, 1,000 pounds. That huge guy up there, 4,000 pounds, all in one block. Another 4K right there. A Couple more ones right there. And then down here we have the 2,000 pounders, which is what we're loading up now. We're gonna load up two 2,000 pounders and one 1,000 for a total of 5,000 pounds of concrete. And then the trailer itself weighs just a hair under 2,000 for a total of 7,000 pounds. Now, uh, I guess I should go help my dad load up, right? Or maybe not. It's more fun watching him work, isn't it? Now, just so you know, YouTube, the reason we use this track loader rather than the tractor for these big blocks is just the hydraulics. The hydraulics on the International there are so much stronger than on our little Ford. And these 2,000 pound blocks, our track loader lifts them up like nothing. Whereas the tractor, sometimes I have to actually help it out with the 1,000 pounders and the 2,000 pounders, it just won't even do straight up. So yes, luckily we do have equipment big enough to handle this job. 
And yes, I know it's a track loader. We call it a bulldozer. Technically, that's not correct. But look at it, guys. It's basically a dozer. All right, let's get this thing loaded up and get the Sierra on the road. Time to back into our trailer back there. So now I can show you the camera system. And this Sierra only has the basic camera system. It doesn't have all the fancy cameras that you can get on a Silverado or a Sierra. And there's actually another really neat uh, feature tied into the camera system, which I will show you here in just a second. But first, let's look at the camera. So there's your regular backup camera view. Now, if you're wondering what these buttons are, this one is for the dynamic grid. And then this one is specifically just a line for your hitch ball. And that line turns as you turn your steering wheel. And then the other one I will show you is only for once you get closer. So first, we do our best to line it up and then once we're nice and close you touch that guy and you get that zoomed in view and now i'm able to very precisely put that hitch ball underneath that coupler and now here's the cool thing guys because i touched that button the truck now knows that i'm probably hooking up a trailer so when i put it in park automatically the electric parking brake comes on. I think that's really smart. Now, when you don't touch that trailering button on your camera system, the parking brake doesn't come on. So it's specifically because it knows I'm hooking up a trailer and it's true. Once you're in position for hooking up, you don't want the truck to move at all. Even that half an inch, it can sometimes roll back and park. So a parking brake is important. And that's a really smart little thoughtful feature by the engineers at GM. Okay, ready for the race, hit it. Come on, ooh, we got some tire spin out of her. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. We're almost there. Boom, 100. So that was zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 16.6 seconds. And just to confirm, Dad, you were foot on the floor, right? Foot on the floor. Foot on the floor. And of course, 100 kilometers an hour for all you that use miles, 100 kilometers an hour is 62 miles an hour. And again, we do have 7,000 pounds behind us. Okay, we're starting our trailering loops. Let's zero out the fuel economy and go for it. Okay, she's fresh. Let's see how this truck does with the weight on the back. Now for kind of towing specific equipment, I already went through the cameras with you guys. Um, we do have the truck in tow haul mode. We're always gonna run these things in tow haul mode. And besides that, that's pretty much it. You know, we don't have any of the real fancy towing systems that these brands are coming out with these days. Um, but I guess the question then is, how is it feeling? The big difference is from a standing start, um, there's a definite, change in terms of acceleration yeah. however as soon as you get up as soon as you get a little bit of speed the torque comes back on um, enough so that during our acceleration test on the highway with that 7,000 pounds we actually got rubber out of this thing yeah it was really like wow it was it was chirping right along there as it got going so you know, it, that, that, that engine is really putting a lot of grunt to the ground. Mm -hmm. And it feels, it feels fine. It feels really good back there. And I think one of the nicest things is I'm just feathering this throttle. I don't have to mash it, not yeah. at all. I don't think I've got a half inch up and down with this throttle. I don't feel any need to go deeper into it. It's getting me exactly where I want to go. So uh, it's got lots and then got lots left over. Okay, everybody, just pulling back into the yard here and stopped. And let's take a look at the fuel economy. Bam! We did exactly 35K and we averaged 13.2 liters per hundred, which with 7,000 pounds on the back is pretty impressive, especially considering that empty, this truck runs around 9.5 to 10 liters per hundred. So, not a massive jump once you stick the weight on. And I will switch this over to US units for all our US folks. Boom, 17.8 MPG out of this three liter Duramax diesel. 
Okay, Dad, final test. We gotta do a bit of off-roading. Now, I think everybody knows this by looking at this truck. This is not an off-road pickup truck. This truck is not designed to be run off-road. However, we do have a locking differential here, and that's actually part of the elevation package. Now, we don't have any of the other good off-road stuff. We don't even have a two-speed transfer case. There's no four low in this truck. There's just four high and two high. No low range is definitely interesting. So we have that G80. I want to put it to the test, and we are going to go now and show you how it works. Now, Dad, here's the question off-roaders always have is, is the G80 good because it's automatic, or does it suck because it's not selectable? I'm kind of in the camp that I like to select my lockers, but how do you feel about that? I love the fact that A, it's mechanical, so I don't have any electric servos to screw up. True. And it it, uh, it clicks into place when you need it, which is when you're spinning. Yeah, you're right, Straight and it up. does go pretty quickly. So yeah, we're gonna go do our offset ruts right now and we will demonstrate it. Okay, entering the offset ruts now, and they're a little tall in the grass over there so you can't see them, but the point is we get good articulation and then we should get some spin. Here we go. Nice. See that? So the tire in the air was spinning, 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 and then suddenly, boom, it sends power. And that's how the G80 works. And that was in two-wheel drive and it just walked right through there. It does react pretty quickly. So now you just need to decide whether you're in the camp of, like I said, people who like the auto locker or uh, whether you'd rather have a selectable one. Now let's go over the build sheet real quick. So this is an elevation four-wheel drive, the base price of which is 51,598 rather. And these are all the standard features on elevation. So you are getting, you know, the bigger touch screen. You're getting the 27 turbo as your base engine. Exterior, you're getting all that styling stuff. You see there the body color bumpers, body color door handles. That's all the elevation stuff that brings along the styling that is unique to this truck. And then on the inside, you're getting a decent amount of technology features. Although, I mean, this is still just cloth seats in here. No leather up in this elevation. Now let's go over to the options. First of all, you have this first preferred equipment group, a bunch more interior features there. Next, you have the diesel, $4,830. These are all Canadian dollars, by the way, so you're paying $4,800 for the diesel, another nearly two grand for even more interior equipment. So yes, this interior would be a lot more sparse if it did not have all of these options packages. And the total in just options on this truck are 13,935, bringing our total to 67,533. Well, everybody, that is it for this one. And the reason why we're doing these comprehensive tests where you get, you know, a little bit of everything, towing, payload, and off-road, is because that gives you a great sense, an overall sense for what a truck is supposed to do. And when we're talking about this 2020 Sierra Duramax, this thing is all about great fuel economy and owning any trailer you put behind this truck. If you have a lot of kilometers to do with a heavy trailer behind you, I could not recommend this Sierra anymore. So guys, that's it for this video. Like I mentioned, this is the very first in a hopefully long line of comprehensive truck reviews. Now we wanna hear what you think. Go below, leave us a comment, let us know what trucks you'd like to see, what you thought of these tests, what you'd like to see in the future. And of course, make sure you hit subscribe because we want you to see all the new content we're just about to start pumping out. Of course, hit like on this video too. And then make sure you come back to the Truck King YouTube channel for more of trucks doing what trucks do best.